Hi, my name is Keith Cooper from North Light Images, and this is just a quick progress update on some of my testing of this, the Epson ET18100 or L18050 in some areas, as uh, yeah, that's Epson's model numbering for you. Uh, this is about profiling. Uh, this is not a, a detail test, but it's an update on what I'm doing, what I'm going to be doing for part of the review, and some answer, already answering some questions I've been asked about how this printer performs. Now, first up, this is an out and out dye based printer. So it has six inks. So it has a black and it's a dye black. And then it has cyan, magenta, yellow, and then it has light cyan and light yellow. Now, some people have already asked me, does this mean that because the likes of the 8500, the 8550 have a gray ink, they're better for black and white? My initial testing here suggests that, as I suspected, that that makes no difference. The gray is not there in printers like this to produce better black and white performance. It may, it may not, but it all depends on the media settings as to whether it makes any difference. Now, I've got here some of the papers I'm going to be doing profiles for. This is in some ways, this is the bit of testing printers that I know very few other people will go to the trouble of doing this, but this gives me a feel for what the printer works like, how it gets ink on paper, how different types of paper interact with the printer. It tells me an awful lot about how the printer works. Now, I'm not gonna go into all the details of the profiling, I've covered that elsewhere, but suffice to say, I print off um, sheets of these colors, and these are profiling targets. Um, these are what I use to create profiles. But before I create profiles, I need to know what media settings there are to use. Turns out that the 18100 here has a relatively limited set of media settings. Now, that in itself is not a problem. It just goes to show that this is firmly aimed as a photo printer on the glossier side of papers. But I wanted to see about matte papers because I know from a test print I did um, just, you know, just using uh, Epson Premium Gloss using Epson Sound Profile, that it works great on that. How does it perform on matte papers? Well, paper I started off with is this one here. This is a pinnacle one. It's one I've, I've looked at recently. It's a, it's, it, you'll find versions of this all over the place. It's etching 310, so 310 gram. Uh, and I've printed this. Um, this is my small profiling target, which fits on a single A4 sheet. This is the one I normally use. This is an A3 plus sheet. Uh, I measure these using an automated reader, an, um, an I1 ISIS Excel reader, which just scans these and produces the data. And what I've done is I've printed it out using the matte setting. Now, the matte setting now, bear in mind the dye inks. So all the settings are going to do is change the balance of how much ink is put down on the paper. There is no specific matte uh, ink, obviously. This is a dye-based printer after all. And what I've got here, this is the print using the Epson matte paper. And then I thought, well, let's see, this, this one looks okay. Let's print it with a different, um, a different media setting. Now, I try and nail this down at the start on just a few papers so that I don't end up wasting masses and masses of paper uh, doing profiling targets uh, with the wrong media settings. So I picked one here, Epson Premium Semi-Gloss Photo Paper. Now, because of the inks, I know it's using the same inks, so there's no difference there. There's going to be a difference in the amount of ink that's put down. So I made two profiles from both of these and I will, when I um, publish the review, I'll put a links uh, to, I'll, I'll make it available. Um, you have to request it directly off me, it's for, for licensing reasons. But uh, all of the profiles I make for this printer will be available for non-commercial use. And I profile it using i1 Profiler and I thought, well, actually, this one looks, the colors look a bit better, a bit more intense on this. Am I fooling myself here? Because I know that an initial evaluation of prints like this will tell me whether there's over inking, whether the media settings are right. So what I did, I made a couple of profiles. Just runs through, takes a few minutes. And I don't use these gamut volume charts very often, but here's the one for the Epson matte. 
um, setting. Now, it's a lovely smooth shape, which is always a good sign on a profile if it's smooth without any lumps and bumps on it. And yep, it shows me. And the height above the axis at the bottom here tells me that the blacks I'm getting are not going to be particularly black. In fact, I'm getting a D max of about 1.6, 1.7 on this, which is good for an art paper like this. Um, I would not be disappointed with it. I could get that up a little bit higher on a pigment ink printer, but you're not going to get much darker than that. So there's no problems there. So that's the one for the matte setting. The next one is the set one for the two, comp sorry, let's get them the right way around. The next one here is the setting using the premium semi-gloss photo paper. I could have picked one of the other ones, but it's just one that's not the matte and it's a photo paper. Um, when I look at this shape, immediately I can see it's nowhere near as smooth. It's a bit bumpy. That suggests from, and I know this from experience doing profiling, that the profile is having to do more work. If it's having to do more work, it usually means that the media setting is less well matched to the, uh, to the particular paper I've got here. If I go back and superimpose the two of them, I can actually see that in some areas, the, the print here that was done on the premium semi-gloss photo paper has a slightly, and we're talking slightly here, slightly larger gamut, and the black is ever so fractionally blacker. We're, we're talking oh, imperceptible between actually looking at the prints. Well, does that mean that I should be using this particular one here. Well, the clue is in that bumpiness that I'm seeing in that. There are lots of other ways you can evaluate um, uh, profiles and look at stuff, but this is just a quick way of, of, of showing the effect. What happened when I got my hand lens out and had a look at where some of these strong colors butt up against light colors, the sort of place you get over inking. And when I looked on this, there is a tiny bit of color bleed. We're getting stronger colors on this but because more ink is being put down on the paper, but too much ink for the paper. So there I've got that. So for the etching, and this is a fairly standard paper, three, I'd say 310 gram etching, um, turns out that the Epson matte is the best setting for getting a profile. I'm not going I have not got the patience to go through every single setting and look at minuscule differences on it. Um, I'm making use of some of my experience of having done this before to save on the work because you really don't want to be doing this for lots and lots of different papers. But anyway, yeah, so I've decided Epson matte is the best one there. So that's the one to pick. So we've got that, that's easy enough to done. Uh, that, I haven't profiled that one yet, but that's a sheet of 380 gram artist matte canvas, also using the Epson matte setting. It's not particularly dark. I'm fairly certain if you varnished that, that would look quite good. So we've got a 380 gram canvas there that fed through this no problem. Um, incidentally, somebody told me that there is a 300 gram limit on how thick paper you can put in here. Fortunately, they told me after I'd made these prints, so I wasn't discouraged from trying it. Key point there, if you don't know for certain, be very careful about basing decisions on what you can and can't do with a printer based on specifications. I know that Epson and Canon are both relatively conservative in their specifications. You may get better than this, and in this you definitely can. And I've had another thing that might be of interest to people is that this, I've got pre-cut cards using this media. I was able to stack eight sheets, A4 sheets in here, and it fed through perfectly well. This is 310 gram paper. 350 gram, not so bad. Now this particular one, this next one I've got here, this is one of my stock of, uh, testing stock from long ago. This is an HP Aquarella 240. It's like a watercolor paper. And this is the print made. Uh, this one is using plain paper setting. Why plain paper? Well, this particular one here was using the enhanced matte and the D-Max on this is a relatively low, around about 1.3. I thought, oh, that's not, not so good. Um, 
it may well work for some images just because you haven't got really dense blacks. Don't worry about it. Some, if you want to print dense blacks, get a paper and a printer that prints dense blacks. Otherwise, don't worry about it. When I look at this and this one here, this particular one looks to have a bit more strength in the colour. They're all fairly faint. And in fact, I've made profiles at both of these settings and the similar effect I noticed to here, whereas this one superficially looks better, the far better profile comes from using this particular paper. And I say this is a 240 gram paper. This paper is once again using the Epson enhanced matte setting. So Epson matte setting is the set for it. So that's that one there. So that tells me that um, for any of these other papers here that are matte papers, I'm going to be using the Epson matte media setting. So that's a quick look at that. Um, I've also looked at some other papers. I'm not going to go through all the ones I've tested so far, but these are ones I'm going to be specifically looking at. I've got several of these cotton rag type papers. This is uh, Permajet's titanium gloss, which I'm hoping a lot of. I've got what is a really nice paper. Uh, this is Photospeed Platinum Cotton 305. That's fine. Um, these sheets should feed just fine through here. I noticed that whereas I could stack loads of sheets of A4 with the thicker sheets, A3 plus sheets, when they're up here, I just needed to touch them at the top just to get them to go through the back. I see no marks on it. So the paper feed is looking fairly good on this as well. So titanium gloss, we've got that. I've got three Red River papers here from the States. That uh, So uh, that's the Polar Gloss Metallic 255, Paladuro Barita Fiber 300, Big Ben Barita 310. So I've got those I'll be having a look at. Um, here's an Anova Textured Natural White. That will be similar to some of these papers here. Um, I've got a luster paper. I've even got a pack of good old Epson Premium Glossy Photo Paper. So I'll make my own profile for that rather than using the Epson one. And there's another one there. So anyway, that's the state of play with profiling. Um, a quick thing addressing inks, in particular blacks and things. If you get the right media, then you won't get any denser blacks really that by printing on with a pigment black on this. Some papers, yes, you will. Others you won't. Like all printers like this, it depends. Dyes, pigments, well, it depends on the media, it depends on the kind of images you want to print. The 8550-8500 is relatively unique in this sense in that it prints, it has a pigment black and a dye black. Now, I can see that these are dye blacks when I look at the spectral plot when I'm making uh, profiles in that there is a, a, a rise in the red area, a decrease in density. That is signifying you know, it's a dye ink, but then we know that. So the 8550-8500 is a mixed ink set. The only way you get the full mixed ink set in use is to use the VFA or Velvet Fine Arts setting on that. There is no equivalent on this. This has a, a somewhat more limited range of uh, settings, but I think it's going to give on the right papers some very good results. So much as with the 8500-8550, my advice was pick your papers carefully and you'll need profiles to get the best out of it. Pick them carefully to get the results out of that. Similarly with this one, get the right media and I think it will produce excellent results. Put the wrong media in it for the kind of print that it's not actually aimed at and you'll get you so-so know, results out of it. Anyway, I hope that update is of use. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask. Um, I just had a few people after yesterday's video contact me and ask me questions about it. So I thought this might be helpful for people thinking about these printers. If you're curious more about that mix of inks in the 8500, 8550, have a look at the Epson ET8550 written review. That's not the video, that's the written review that's linked to it, because that I've got lots of charts and things, and I go into the details of how the blacks are used in a lot more detail than I can ever cover in a video. So um, hoping that's interested, interesting. So um, thanks for watching. Oh, please do subscribe to the channel. It is appreciated. Thanks.